Last month, Microsoft laid off 2,000 employees and over 40% of them were software engineers. And now with AI generating millions of lines of code every day, there's only one question on everyone's mind. Is AI actually replacing human developers? Today, we're putting that question to the test. I'm going to spin up two AI agents, one as a front-end developer and the other as a back-end developer to build a subscription tracking app from scratch. No coding, just prompts. And we'll be using Warp, which is an agentic development environment that is designed to let AI agents build software for you. What makes this experiment interesting is that I have created these incredibly detailed prompts for each agent, breaking down exactly what a real development team would need to build. We are giving it the same level of specification you would give actual developers. All right, let's set this up. I'm here in Warp where I can run multiple AI agents simultaneously. We will have two agents. Agent one is the front-end developer responsible for React, Wheat, Tailwind, and all the UI components. So within Warp, enter the command, make their app, and CD into it. I'm going to press Command T to spin up another agent, and this will be the backend developer handling Express Server, Superbase integration, and all the API logic. So make their server and CD into the server folder. But before we can have our agents start building our application, we need to set up the database. I've created a new Superbase project called AI Agents Test. Now here is where it gets interesting. Instead of manually creating tables and setting up schemas like we normally would, I'm going to let Warp's AI agents handle the entire database setup using Superbase's MCP server integration. MCP server is essentially an API for AI. It allows AI agents to interact with external services like they're part of the conversation. And it is actually quite simple to set up. From Superbase blog on MCP server, under the setup section, click on create a personal access token and create a new access token. This is basically an API key that will let Warp connect directly to my Superbase account. I have already created a token and copied it to my clipboard. Back in Warp, command backslash, open the MCP servers panel and add a new MCP server. I'm going to use the configuration from Superbase blog post. Copy, paste it and update the personal access token placeholder. Once I save this, Warp now has full context of my Superbase account. It can create tables, set up authentication, configure storage buckets, everything. I can now close this panel, close the side panel, open agent two, and simply paste a prompt into Warp to set up my entire database. I'm asking Warp to connect to my Superbase account, update AI agents test project, set up a subscriptions table, a subscription payments table, configure file storage, and I also mentioned that we want to rely on auth users table for user management and not to create a separate users table. I'm going to press enter. You can see Warp is now asking if it is allowed to call this MCP tool, which is a super base tool, list projects. I'm going to go ahead and press run. And I'm going to give it access for further tool calls as well. And just like that, the AI is setting up my entire backend infrastructure. This is the power of agentic development with MCP servers. That took about a minute to run, but our setup is now complete. Check Superbase, and we can see in the table editor, the two new tables have been created, subscription payments and subscriptions. We also have a storage bucket, subscription logos, that we can use to store any images we want to upload. Our Superbase database is all set up. Now back in Warp, let me give the front-end agent its first task. You can see I've given the agent a detailed prompt to set up the entire React application with Superbase authentication. I'm specifying the exact tech stack, the setup requirements, the authentication features, the Superbase auth integration specifics, styling requirements, the deliverable, and coordination with agent two. While this is running in the background, let's get our backend agent running in parallel. I'm going to paste the prompt to set up the express server and API endpoints for subscription management. Once again, we have the stack specification, the server setup steps, subscription management endpoints, file upload endpoints, billing calculations endpoints, authentication instructions, billing cycle logic, deliverables, and coordination. 
While this is running, let me go back to the front-end agent. Now the front-end agent seems to have completed the authentication flow. It also gives us a nice output of the project structure. If I quickly update the environment variables and then run npm run dev, we can see our subscription tracking app. It's called Subtracker. There is sign in and get started, a hero section, a feature section, and then a CTA. And we click on get started for free. We are navigated to slash sign up to create an account. I'm going to go ahead and enter my email and password and click create account. Check your email for a confirmation link. And when I confirm, you can see I am now logged in. We have the dashboard view with total monthly cost, active subscriptions, and monthly spending. We also have a card to manage all our recurring payments and a card for recent activity. The front-end agent did a pretty good job of setting up a Beat React project, configured Tailwind, set up Shatsy and UI components, and created a complete authentication flow with login, sign up, and sign out. Let's go back to the front-end agent and prompt to implement the subscription management UI in the dashboard. I'm going to paste the prompt, which is once again, a very detailed prompt. Build the core subscription management functionality using Shatsy and UI. We list down the features, the components to use, styling, user ID handling, deliverables, and coordination. Make sure to select agent mode. I'm going to fire this off and take a look at the backend agent. Okay, seems like our backend agent has completed the Express Server setup and also is running the development server for us. Server running on localhost port 3001 and API documentation available at localhost 3001 slash API slash health. When we visit the URL, we can see the status healthy and all the different API endpoints available from our Express Server. The backend agent has made great progress. Let's go back to our frontend agent now. The front-end agent is still working, so I'm gonna give it a couple of seconds. All right, our subscription management UI should now be complete. Let's run npm run dev and test this out. We're on localhost 5174. Let's log in again. And we have the dashboard. The UI has changed a bit. We now have your subscriptions and then an add subscription button. When I click the button, we see service name, monthly cost, billing cycle, monthly, yearly, and custom, start date, which is a calendar picker, category, so entertainment, productivity, education, news media, software development, and so on. And finally, an optional logo. This is looking amazing. I'm going to go back to the front end agent, and this time ask to build a calendar view that shows when subscriptions renew. So here's the prompt, create the main calendar interface using Shatsy and UI components. I have the features, the calendar functionality, the logo display, Shatsy and components to use, styling, user ID handling, deliverables, and coordination. I'm going to switch to agent mode and press enter. And now the backend agent gets the analytics API. And to no one's surprise, this is also a very detailed prompt. So we have dashboard summary, detailed analytics, reporting, information about analytics calculations like spending aggregations, and so on. Let me switch to agent mode and press enter. So we are going to let both the front-end agent and the back-end agent run in parallel. All right, looks like our calendar view is just about to get completed. So I'm going to quickly follow this up with the UI for analytics, which the back-end agent is working on. Our backend agent, in the meantime, has completed its task. So if we refresh slash API slash health, we should see the analytics and reports API endpoints. That took about a minute, but our analytics UI should also now be complete. All right, if we visit slash dashboard, we should now be able to see all our features. We have total monthly cost, active subscriptions, monthly spending, your subscriptions in three different views, so calendar, with calendar being a custom Shatsian component, analytics, some more data and charts, and a simple list view of our subscriptions. I'm going to add a new subscription. Let's call it Code Evolution, $7 a month, monthly billing cycle, June 22nd start date, category, software development. I'm gonna keep the logo optional and click on add subscription. We have our monthly cost, $7. 
one active subscription and this month monthly spending is seven dollars i can also see the entry being made in the calendar against june 22nd click this tile and we can see a detailed view code evolution active software development total paid start date last updated and then the payment history let's go ahead and add one more let's call the service name ai agent monthly cost ten dollars for example monthly billing cycle start date june 1st category productivity and i'm going to add a logo so against june 1st we now have a ten dollar subscription to ai agents if i switch over to analytics you can see our spending trend spending by category upcoming renewals and then a category breakdown i can go to the list view and we simply see a list of all our subscriptions of course at any point we can also edit ai agent updated for example and we should see the updated service name click on delete a confirmation dialog and our subscription has been deleted in our subscriptions table we can see the one entry for code evolution at seven dollars a month and in the odd table you should see one row corresponding to my account if you open the project folder you can see the entire code base we have app and server app which is our front-end app and you can see the ai agent did a pretty good job of organizing the files and folders we have assets components ui for shatsy and components all the different subscription and analytics related components we have a separate context folder for auth context and subscription context a lib folder for all the utilities pages for all the different views a types folder and this to me is as good as you get we can also see that it's made use of env files to not commit keys or secrets to version control and we also have our backend server folder with routes and utils the two ai agents have implemented our subscription tracking app so then what do you think can ai agents replace human developers well here is the truth ai just built in 20 minutes what a junior developer would take two weeks to build but notice what i had to do i wrote incredibly detailed specifications i chose the libraries i structured the prompts and what to expect from the ai agents AI didn't replace the developer. It simply replaced the typing, the thinking, architecture decisions, problem decomposition, that was all still human. I essentially became a senior developer managing to junior AI developers. So here's my advice. Don't fear AI, leverage it instead. Start using tools like Warp and let AI do the grunt work for you while you focus on problem solving. Now the question isn't whether AI isn't going to change how we code. It already has. The question is whether you are going to adapt.